And I suddenly realized I prayed and God had answered. I was waiting to be hit by a lightning bolt, by honey, by fire, by all of those things when God had given me the answer the very second I prayed. And it's really important we get that. So every Christian can have this experience. Let me answer two more questions as we continue here. Um, What is the evidence of being filled with the Holy Spirit? Now, again, I grew up in a a Pentecostal Assemblies of God denomination, and they would teach, and I love my Assemblies of God friends, they would teach that the gift of tongues is, they would call it the initial evidence, is the first evidence that you've been filled with the Spirit. And I I agree with that about 95%. So I think you'd actually have a hard time saying, you know, that language isn't Bible language. I have a bit of hesitation. I believe it's one of the evidences of being filled with the Spirit. And I believe it's probably the primary evidence of being filled with the Spirit. But I have met people who've been filled with the Spirit and prophesied before they've spoken in tongues. I've actually met people who, I think in a sense, I would say I was that person who received that gift of the Spirit. I think I received the gift of the Spirit, not when I spoke in tongues, but when I, when I prayed in the field, yeah, when I asked God. I would say, though, God had to get my mind out of the way. I'm intellectual. I had a preconceived idea in my mind of how this would work, and I think God had to literally, like, put me to sleep in a way just to get past my mind. So I believe the gift of tongues is absolutely probably the main evidence of speaking of of being baptized in the Spirit, but I don't think it has to be the only evidence. And I, if I will pray for somebody, if you were here right now and I would pray for you, I would pray and I would base the fact that I believe you've been filled, not on the fact you could speak in tongues, but on the promise of God. And I, I believe at times people can like get in this sort of infinite regression loop thing where they go, well, I don't speak in tongues, so I haven't been filled. And rather, they should say, no, I prayed. The evidence I need is the word of God. And I can receive the gift of the Spirit by faith. And then having received the gift of the Spirit by faith, I then begin to speak in tongues. So let me finish with this today. How do we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Um, Let me read a passage here in Galatians 3, verse 5. In Galatians 3, Paul asks the Galatians a question. In uh, verse 3, Excuse me. He said, did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain indeed, if it was in vain? And then verse five, in verse 5, he says, Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles amongst you, does he do it by the works of the law? or by the hearing of faith. Let me simplify this. Paul's basically saying, did you receive the Holy Spirit because you were good enough by the works of the law, because you made the grade, because you deserve this, because you earned this, or did you receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith? Now, what I've encountered occasionally is people who try to receive the Spirit like I did by begging God, by imploring God, by getting this person to pray for them and that person to pray for them. So if if you were here with me today, if we had somebody who needed to be filled with the Spirit, the first thing I would do is actually give them the promises of God. I would actually show them that this is a promise. It's not based on how good I am, how bad I am. Uh, If God only filled perfect Christians with his Spirit, no Christian would be full of his Spirit. Jesus would be the only one. And this is not based on our performance, but on God's promise. And I would show people God's promises. Jesus said, if you, you know, being evil, your little boy asks you for a fish, do you give him a scorpion? He asks for bread, do you give him a stone? Jesus said, how much more will your father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So key number one, if you wanted to be filled with the Spirit, I would give you the promises of God. And I would have you to anchor your faith in the promises of God more than in any experience, even a biblical experience, even a wonderful experience. I would encourage you to anchor your faith in the glorious promises of God. Secondly, I would encourage you to reach out, ask God to fill you, and then believe he had filled you, to believe you had it. Mark eleven twenty four. what things you desire when you pray, believe you have received them, and then you'll see them happen. 
So I would, if you were here wanting that experience, I'd give you the promises of God, I'd pray, and then I'd say, let's believe we have received. And then I'd encourage you to take a step of faith and begin speaking in tongues. Now, I would encourage you again, if you were here, that God won't come and grab a hold of your mouth and force you to speak in tongues. It says they spoke in tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance, gave them the words, gave them the things to say. So I would encourage them, you, to take a step of faith, to open your mouth, not to speak in English, and begin speaking in tongues. Now, I'm going to talk more about the gift of tongues in the next lesson. But what I'd say in finally is, well, really a couple of things here, because I've done this thousands of times. Whenever somebody begins speaking in tongues, Satan usually comes to them and says, you're making that up. That's not real. That's not a real tongue. That's fake. And he's a liar and the father of lies. And the second thing I'd say to them is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. Paul says, if I speak in tongues but have not love, it profits me nothing. And what I'd say to somebody is what occasionally a a younger Christian will do is begin speaking in tongues and then begin thinking like, I don't get much out of this. Is that real? The the listening to the words and the thinking, what's the point of this? And what they've got to do is put love behind it. So imagine if I were here today in in speaking in English and saying, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. It's just form. It's not it's it's real the words have meaning but they're not coming from my heart they're coming from my head and um, there's a world of difference between saying I love you Jesus I love you Jesus I love you Jesus and actually saying Jesus I really love you where it's coming from my heart that's where the anointing falls and it's the same thing with tongues it's possible to be speaking in tongues purely it's it's real it's tongues but it's not coming from your heart and it's noise it's a clanging symbol that when you put your heart behind it both in worship in prayer in intercession in praying out something when you do that the anointing hits it so i would engage encourage people to engage the heart of love behind what they do and the power of god will come upon it sila hope that's a help guys hey we'll be back in the next lesson where we're going to explore the power of speaking in tongues. Don't go away. Bye for now.